Investigator Jack. Hey, Master Shadow. I'm not gonna lie, I kind of started early so I could finish early. <laughs> So I wanted, I wanted to stream. After today, oh my god, dude, I want, like, a relaxing stream. But, like... Yeah. I also don't want to go on until 9 again. Especially after last night. First, Orphan Tears 2 by your favorite Martian is going to be released. I'm a bit excited. I feel like my music is a little too loud. Oh yeah, my music is very loud. Jesus. <clears throat> How am I today? Tired. Um, didn't really get good sleep last night, so that's why I started early today, so I can finish early today and go to bed earlier. <clears throat> so. My day has been exhausting, frankly. Hello, Otto. And the most relaxing part of my day, though, was making that fucking Disney fighting game roster. You guys saw that shit? <clears throat> the biggest fucking meme that I've put out in a while. Hey, Daisy Foxtrot. Up 
Disney platformer fighter. Let's go. Y'all see this shit? I put this shit together. So bad, but... <laughs> Don't use Twitter that much anymore? Fair enough, fair enough. But yeah, that... That's... That's my... It's my theoretical... Um... Platformer fighter. Uh, for... For a Disney one. Good luck making movesets? I mean, I mean movesets are... Move sets I don't think would be too terribly hard for a lot of these. Most of these are like are are self-explanatory or already like made. <clears throat> You're almost done with your comp? Oh, your video on Leo? Nice. I mean you could just make clones out of the first three. Nah Nah, Oswald, Mickey, and Minnie, I feel like kind of deserve their own move sets cuz especially Mickey Mickey is like such a rounded character because he has like so many different like he's got his hands in so many different things many uh like has a lot of uh a lot of the same like she's got her hands in a lot of the same things but in different places and then Oswald only has like epic Mickey so, like, Oswald's, like, the most out there one. It's a nice roster. Yeah, I tried to get as many, like... <clears throat> I tried to make it, like, really interesting, but also, like... Not terrible. Not AIDS. But I wanted to make it sure it was, like, really, really, in like, really interesting while I put it together at the same time. Because I didn't want to just get the same old, same old that you would expect, like... You would expect, like, half of the, this roster, right? Not just move set stages too. Oh, stages would be so easy, though. <clears throat> but yeah, no. <clears throat> you look at this, you look at this roster. You look at this big V to the eyes. Let's go, yeah. Hello, Missile Dragon. Have I eaten, stayed hydrated, take any minutes? Eating, eating, I'm literally eating now. <laughs> I have, like, some pizza in front of me. <clears throat> um, staying hydrated, uh, I mean, I got soda, so no. And then taking any meds other than my hormones this morning. No, I don't take meds. But yeah, so it's like, you, you would expect, you know, you would expect Mickey, Donald, and Goofy on, an, on a roster like this. You would expect... You know, probably Woody and Buzz. You would expect... Um... Uh, Maleficent. You would expect, like, Pete, maybe. Like, most of these... Most of these you would you would expect. But, like, I threw in some fun ones in there. Like, who the fuck was going to ever, like, look at Bonkers? Like, my... my justice for my boy Bonkers, man. <sighs> few characters that are coming to upcoming movies. I mean, I don't know. I, I kind of thought about, like... I thought about, like, putting in, like, Encanto or... Or, um... Like, whoever... Whichever character from Encanto and, um... The, the one from Turning Red, May, but... I don't know. <clears throat> I didn't feel like... I didn't feel like those were interesting enough. You even got Mary Poppins? Yeah! Yeah, yeah. So, I don't know, did you dis genuinely don't know most of these characters beside their names? Fair enough. But yeah, no, it's like, you, ex you expect some of these. Like, you would expect maybe the Beast or Hercules on a fucking fighting game. Who the hell is John Smith? He comes from Pocahontas. Sully, but no Mike. Mike would be, um, Mike would be a an assist trophy. Don't worry, I thought about that. Mike would be an assist trophy, because that's their dynamic. Sully is the, the field worker, Mike is the, the manager. That's That was their dynamic. So Mike would be an assist trophy. 
I know Guru took issue with Sully, but no, uh, what was it, Randall? <laughs> Guru took the took issue with no Randall. I'm like, Randall, I mean, yeah. Bill Cypher would be overpowered? Not necessarily, you could nerf him. It'd be like asking, oh, wouldn't Palutena be too broken for, for Smash Bros? Not necessarily. Depends on what kind of moveset you give him. Jack the Pumpkin King? Of course. Of course he would be there. Why would I not put in fucking Nightmare Before Christmas in there? He'd be on the box for his physical right? Yes, I'd be reading him in game. <laughs> <laughs> Hades is in this game, but not in Smash. <laughs> you're right! <laughs> hey, Dream SMP fan 73 welcome to the chat, I hope you enjoy your stay. Who's Oswald? Oswald predates Mickey Mouse. Uh, he's Oswald the Rabbit. Uh, he was the original, um, and then... There was like some, I think, copyright trouble with Oswald? Or not copyright trouble, but like, ownership trouble with Oswald? So Walt made Mickey. In retort. So Oswald was the original. Obviously I was gonna put Oswald in. Come on. <laughs> but Chip and Dale be voiced by John Williams. <laughs> yeah. You might notice that I that most of these are actually ordered by when they came out. By when they were when they debuted. Except Bill and Chip and Dale. And the reason for that is because while I was trying to organize them, uh, I noticed um, I noticed that I was missing one. I looked back and noticed Chip and Dale was the one that I was missing. And I did not want to go through the whole fucking roster of 50 characters that I had at the time to fucking put in Chip and Dale where they would belong. <laughs> Same goes for Bill Cipher. By, by Bill Cipher, I just didn't care. Happy you got Johnny Depp in there? No, I got I got Captain Jack in there. I know it's it's technically Johnny Depp, but eh, it's Captain Jack. Technically Chippendale is still in order. I mean, no, they they debuted like way before they debuted in like the forties. Oswald is like the family member that no one knows how they're related, but they're the oldest member of the family, yeah, basically. Fighter pass one, challenger one is Kronk. I thought about making, like, challenger passes for this, just for the- to, to add on to the meme. I would've fucking put in Mater in one of them. So I thought that that was a bad idea. <laughs> I would've put in- I would've probably put in Mater. I would've probably put in... Um... <laughs> Mater in the same place as Pilot. <laughs> Hello Sailor Moon Clipses, welcome to the chat, I hope you enjoy your stay. Lightning McQueen gets the plant's place. <laughs> 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 but yeah, I, that, like, if I, if I was to, like, make little... I think I followed you yesterday on Twitch. Probably did. But yeah. If I was to continue this, this, like, hypothetical... And do, like, the fighter's passes and stuff like that. That would probably be where I'd put people like May or the, the Encanto girl, whatever her name is. Or maybe I'd put Bruno, you know? We don't, we're not supposed to talk about him. But, you know. What if he was top tier, huh? What then? <laughs> Can you imagine the series that didn't get a fighter, they would have a stage? Oh yeah, no, I... I would have totally seen, like, uh, a Bugs Life's Anthill as a stage. I thought that would be really cool. Mushu is an assist trophy. Yeah, well, I thought Mushu would be a part of Mulan's moveset because they're in the fucking image, but whatever. Hello, Emmanuel. 
put Launchpad McQuack be a DuckTales character or a Darkwing Duck character? I don't know, but I didn't put either. You may notice that the only of uh, those characters that I put on was, was, was Donald. I didn't even put Daisy Duck, which probably would be like something in like a Fighter's Pass kind of deal. If I was to continue with this hypothetical. Penny's house, yeah. Again, this is a cool hypothetical. Um, <clears throat> I don't really see this... If, if this idea was to happen, this certainly would not be the roster. Not at all. I mean, there'd be some, there'd be some crossover. Like, there are some, like, obvious answers here, but I would not. <laughs> I would be very surprised if this was, like, the roster. If Disney got, if Disney jumped on the fucking bandwagon of just the platformer fighters. Because Nick's doing it, you know, Warner, Time Warner is doing it. Obviously, Steamboat Willie would be a sage. Oh, yeah, for sure, for sure. Um, Beast's Castle would probably be a stage. <clears throat> um, but, yeah. Uh, some, yeah, no, some of these would definitely be in there. If Disney jumped on the platformer fighter, like, craze... Some of these the, these characters would definitely be in. Uh, Mickey, Donald, Goofy, Pete, those would absolutely be in. Probably Minnie. I could see I could definitely see Pinocchio, maybe Yin Sid, possibly. I could definitely see Rapunzel getting in. Rapunzel's so big right now, like as far as as far as like Disney's concerned, Rapunzel's like huge. Elsa would definitely be in there because Elsa's their fucking cash cow. I could totally see the beast. Uh, making its way, uh, making his way in. I could see Peter Pan making his way in. Mulan, most likely. I'd, I'd see, uh, honestly, if this was to be more realistic, I could see all of the fucking Disney princesses having their own fucking role in the, the fighter. Just cause Disney likes to milk the shit out of their Disney princesses. So any princess that I have on here, like, Mer like Merida, would, would be in the fucking game. Ursula, but no Ariel? I didn't really, I mean, <clears throat> there's much more you can do with Ursula than Ariel, but they would try. Like, in a realistic setting, if they were to do this, they would absolutely try for Ariel instead of uh, Ursula, but Ursula would be better. Wreck-It Ralph takes Sora's spot. Wreck-It Ralph's on my list, though. <clears throat> But yeah, that's that's if they were to jump on the fucking hype. I don't think Disney's ever gonna jump on the hype. But like, if they do, you know, call back to this stream and see how wrong I was to put Kermit on this fucking list. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Jack Skellington probably would would still be there. Aladdin definitely would be on the on the on the actual roster. Absolutely. But yeah, you, like, you you can call back to this and tell me how wrong I am for putting Kermit or Pooh or fucking Mary Poppins on here. Kermit would be a joke fighter. Abs that's why he's here. Dude, Kermit, Pooh, Mary Poppins, all of those are fucking joke characters at this point. Bonkers? Man, justice for Bonkers. They need to acknowledge Bonkers again. <laughs> Kermit, but he just has to be a smooth snap. <laughs> well, of course. The Winnie the Pooh horror movie's already out, though. It's on, uh, it's leaked on YouTube. <laughs> Kermit but no Miss Piggy. SMH, this is blasphemy. Look, I kept, I kept it at 60 characters, man. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, really? Yeah, yeah, the the Winnie the Pooh horror movie? Yeah, that's that's already out on, on, on YouTube. Look up The Last Pot of Honey by um by by Geek Heavy, I think. Hold on, by what what was his name? 
The last, the last jar of honey or last pot of honey by, yeah, Geek Heavy. Last pot of honey by Geek Heavy, uh, is, is the leak. I love PS2 Tron, yeah. Dude, Tron looking, I, <laughs> I was looking at the, the, the still that I had for Tron and I was like, why are you looking like just a robot though? Hey Murdoch. Just a Tron, yeah. <laughs> but yeah. Here's what people are gonna do with Mickey when he becomes a public domain. Um, simple. Bending, you remember Bending the Ink Machine? Yeah, that. Tron's Echo Fighter should be the CLU, yeah. <laughs> yeah. This obviously... ...was my attempt... ...to just kind of have fun with like... ...a concept... ...if Disney ever decided to jump on the platformer, uh, platformer fighter craze that's going- that... Seems to be going around right now. So, I wonder what Baymax moveset would be. I've never seen Big Hero 6, so Baymax might not have been a really good choice for me, but I just kind of figured he would be. Waiting for the day where Mickey becomes PD, uh, public domain because fuck Disney. Yeah. Well. Anyway, we're gonna get rid of this image. <clears throat> I'm done talking about this. It was, it's fun though. It was a fun little conversation. Baymax is more of a healthcare robot than a fighter. Well, I didn't know that. I've never seen Big Hero 6, so. I just figured I'd put him in there because, like, Big Hero 6. How did I not notice my boy Roger at it? Yeah. You should definitely watch Big Hero 6 whenever you can. I've heard it's a pretty okay movie. But, like, I also know it was a really big movie, so... That's why he was in there. How long does it take for something to become public domain? Too long. It's like 70 years or so. And then there's the Mickey Claws. Specifically the Mickey Claws. Takes over 50 years. Thought it was 70. And then there was the Mickey Claws that just kept it going. It used to just take 50 though. Yeah. And then Disney was just like, no, I, we don't want to lose Mickey Mouse. Hello, Bunga Troy. Seventy years from the year the material was created. That's what I thought. And then it's like, sometime after the, the guy's death, too. Because otherwise it can be renewed. <sighs> Dude, it's gonna be fucking crazy next year to see what Disney does. Because for those who don't know, or for those who haven't been keeping track, next year is Disney's 100th anniversary. D the, the Walt Disney Corporation would have been around for a hundred years by next year. They started October 16th, 1923.
So next year is their 100th, 100th anniversary, their 100th birthday. Exactly 100. So I can't wait to see what they do next year. How are they gonna... They're either gonna botch it up or it's going to be the year of Disney. One of those two things is going to happen. Walt Disney comes back alive from ice. Yeah, they just revived Disney for the 100th anniversary. <laughs> he makes fucking... He makes fucking Epcot a thing. As I said, it's either going to be the biggest year for Disney yet, or it's going to be an absolute fucking disaster. They're gonna have a lot of hype to live up to, by the way. It's fucking crazy to think, though, right? Like, the fact that Disney has been around for... The, the Walt Disney Corporation has been around for, like, 99 years. Like, how many other companies can say that? To celebrate 100 years of magic, we are creating limited time NFTs of your favorite characters. No, they did that last year. <laughs> More likely a disaster or a total flop of a showing? Yeah, basically. Nintendo- yeah. Nintendo's definitely one of them as well. Mr. Clean will be able to say that soon? Really? Like, yeah, yeah, I know Nintendo- as I, I, I said, and how, how many get to say that? Not There's not many. I don't imagine there would be very many, like, companies that are almost 100 years old. Or over 100 years old. I feel like, I, I know there's definitely, like, a handful, but it's not a lot. <clears throat> it's really not a lot. For the 100th anniversary, we will reveal our secret. Our parks are in reality, spaceships, and to celebrate, we will exit the planet to find other worlds to conquer. We will become the monopoly of the universe. Coca-Cola? Really? I actually didn't know Coca-Cola was that old, too. I guess it makes sense. They've been around since, like, the 20s, right? That makes sense, actually. They were around since cocaine was legal. Yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah. Because that's, that's why it's called Coca-Cola. Right? Or at least that's why it was called Coke. For our 100th anniversary, we're minting NFTs of all our characters. As I said, they did that last year. They're not going to do that again. May I ask something that involves with your news? Calm on the cloud palace? Sure. Hershey's is probably a hundred, actually, it's all in the machine. <clears throat> See, I didn't even know that. Yeah, no, it was great. Uh, I, re I fully remember... I remember last year when they minted those NFTs. I noticed that, um, that they did it for Wally in particular. Like, they, they did an NFT of Wally, and I'm like, why didn't kneecap the exact, like point of your movie. <laughs> like, way to fucking kneecap the exact thing your movie was fighting it, like, against. Since 1894, so yeah, 128 years. That's what I thought. But yeah, no. Fucking Wally NFTs defeats the fucking point. Come on now. <laughs> Yeah, 
You're literally minting an NFT of a movie that has an environmental, like, environmentalist message to it. You're a fucking idiot. Whoever's, whose ever decision that was to mint those NFTs, you're a fucking moron. Tell me you didn't watch your movie without telling me you didn't watch your movie. It's like making a gun with peace paint. Yeah, exactly. Still mentally preparing for what Disney's gonna pull off for Pride Month after the last few months. Ah, oh, jeez. Oh, give it a day. Like, give it, give it a week. We'll see. It's gonna be messy, though. Oh, that thing's gonna be so fucking messy. We only got one week until Rainbow Capitalism Month, yeah. Y'all ready for it? Y'all ready for, like, the most nothing month to happen? And we're just gonna, like, parade around as if it means anything? Despite the fact that we all know nothing's going to change. Am I a bit nihilistic? Possibly. <laughs> But I'm trans, so I have every right to at this point. My my rights get infringed on all the fucking time, everywhere. Like, I'm so glad I live in the state that I do. Because otherwise, uh, I would not be able to live. <sighs> it's great. Skittles did the make candy colorless thing again. They've done that for like the past like five years. I'm not surprised. Power move, Disney does nothing. Absolutely nothing during Pride. Yeah, basically. So what's it gonna be? Walmart already pulled the rainbow capitalism with some Pride ice cream. Uh, of course. Am I a bit, am I a bit jaded? Am I a bit nihilistic? Eh, maybe. I'm just, I don't know. I, I support Pride, not Pride Month. I feel like every month should be, I, I feel like every month should be in favor of, uh, of, of LGBT rights. But, um, companies only relegate that to one month so they can act like they're doing something progressive. Oh yeah, no, the Blue's Clues thing was kind of hype. Because I actually genuinely believe that Blue's Clues, like, supports Pride and shit. Absolutely. Blue's Clues is like one of those few, few times that Pride Month is actually good. <clears throat> but like, yeah, every month should, should be in support of LGBT. We, we don't need to pretend like we care for one month actually care the entire year, please. <laughs> Christ. <sighs> I don't understand why people generalize others that choose the beat in vegetarian lifestyle as people want to clown it. Like, I'm not a vegetarian slash vegan, but I know it's not hard to respect their lifestyle. Yeah, I don't know. I think it's because vegans have gotten, gotten a bad rep. Because of their lifestyle, they actually have to explain that, like, hey, is there any vegan options? Is there any vegan, like, uh, is there, is there vegan options at this, like, restaurant or some shit like that? And so they've gotten, like, this bad reputation for being, like, the, the very whiny, like, oh, how do you know when a, when a vegan is in a room, they'll fucking tell you, you know, that kind of thing. I don't think it's particularly fair, um, because, like, fucking that would that would be the same thing with like 
Judaism. Like, you want things that are kosher. But, like... You know... We, we don't... Well, I guess I can't say we don't make fun of Jewish people for that. But, you know what I mean. It's hard to stay positive when everyone pretends to be pro-LGBTQ plus for a month and then initially watch the rainbow way as soon as it's July 1st. Yeah. It's, it's hard to remain positive about it. That's, I, I know Ephraim, like, means well when it comes to the whole thing, like, whole supporting Pride Month and what have you. But I don't know. I don't think pretending, I think, I'm, I'm kind of with you. Pretending to care doesn't get in, it doesn't, pretending to care for a month doesn't mean you actually care. It, it's not anything, like, period. It's just, it's just trying to pander to us and make us feel better for, like, one month. <sighs> you just need to make sure the pedos stay up. They keep trying to join the LGBTQ plus community. They don't, period. Yeah, well. Vegans have a bad reputation when the vegan teacher made it worse. I feel sorry for vegans that aren't like that and are normal. Yeah. Like, I'm not a vegan myself. Oh, I literally just had a pizza that has cheese on it. So, you know, animal products. So obviously I'm not a vegan myself. Um, <clears throat> but, you know, I, I think it's, it's, it takes extra effort to be a dick. You're actively, you're actively taking more time out of your life to you know, to put others down and make them feel miserable. It takes literally zero extra effort to to not be a dick, you know? Which is why I don't pretend to care. Hmm. Love meat and cheese too much to even think about being vegan? Yeah, exactly. Ugh. Jack, when you say you don't pretend to care, are you just not pro-LGBT? Or is that just bad wording on your end? Because, homie, I got some bad news for you. You're in the wrong chat if that's if the if it's the former. Karen, the vegan teacher, will come for you if you mention them by name. I mean, I'm not mentioning them in a bad. I'm not mentioning them in a bad light. Or at least not explicitly. <laughs> I'm not entirely sure what all they've done in order to get that bad rep, nor do I really care. I feel like I could do with more veggies in my diet, or at least like an apple a month. I could, like, when, whenever my family could have afforded it, right? I would ask for, like, veg uh, vegetables and stuff, and then I'll, like, I would, like, create salads for my lunch, and I would just have a salad for lunch. But. <laughs> like, I would just have salads, like, three days in a row for lunch. And that would be it. That would be all I'd have. I would, like, skip out on dinners whenever that happened, though, so that was probably not good for me. <laughs> I'm still kind of waiting on that hamster investigator. <laughs> Was it just bad wording, or...? In my case, I'm opening up myself to try vegan alternatives. Tried some vegan chicken tenders, and I ended up liking it more than real chicken. Ah, oh, neat. 
one of these days I'll I'll work up the courage to try the impossible burger or the impossible whopper or whatever. One of these days I'll work up the the confidence to do so, but I like the I like the Texas double whopper a little too much. <laughs> I like my jalapenos. <laughs> Have to be an impossible to cheeseburger. Point is, is I, 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 I've wanted to try the impossible Whopper, but I've been, I, I've had like, no courage to do so. Rainbow, I think you ran out. Oh no, did we scare him away with her? With... Cause like... Southern brain make born with burger addiction. <laughs> yeah. Don't I know it. But yeah, did we, did we run him out? Cause I mean, I I just got through saying that I was trans. I don't know. I don't know why you wouldn't figure that I'd be pro LGBT. I I literally have it like down there on the FAQs. It's like it's literally just down there. Like, you still here? Oh okay. Native to Tennessee here. Can confirm. Born or good. Lived in or er, born in Arkansas. Can confirm. I don't hate the community, I think just the month is unnecessary. Well, yeah, the month is redundant, because every, every day should be, like, pro-LGBT. Like, we should just care about the rights of others. Like, that's, that should just be the end of it. Pride Month just has people pretend to care for a month. So they can sell, uh, so they can sell the gays trademark things that, like, they would like for them for like for the month and then they can just go back to not caring whenever uh whenever like a trans person gets shot in the street unfairly you know you know we, we don't we, we don't have to worry about it you know we're companies Blah. <laughs> i just uh... Every day should te or every day should be like actually Pride Month. Don't just pretend to care, Jesus. It sucks because sometimes there's like a limited time flavor that's really good, and I feel like I failed my duty as a trans person to not buy into corporate pride. Eh, well. I think it's an autism month, and let me say I've heard more than enough people online use slurs on us to know that people don't give a fuck. Yeah. But they can sell it, or, but they can sell things to the gays. They can't really. Or they, they think they can sell things to the gays, so. Again. Blech. I'd rather buy from like a, like an independent, you know, that's like selling some, some pride merch. Go on some shit like Zazzle or whatever. Eh. <laughs> <sighs> shit gets expensive though on, on that site. I fear the day this country becomes 100% anarcho-capitalist like cyberpunk. I hate to break it to you, we are fast track on that path. Cause this whole co this whole country is run by fucking companies. Etsy, yeah, Etsy is another one. Yeah, this whole company, or like, this whole country is run by companies. Like, 
people will sit there and go, oh, you know, uh, Idiocracy is, is not like a documentary. But there's not really a good case against it, TVH. Members of the LGBTQ plus community should be in positions of power during Pride. That way we can finally get what we actually want. Uh, but that's too hard. You actually have to give people power. Yeah. I... Hmm. Pride Month makes me bitter. It makes me bitter because I know it's, it's, it's fake. But I'll still, like, partake in it. Because I get to be obnoxious. I can be, I can be, like, I can be aggressively trans for a month. That doesn't, that doesn't bother me. This is, this is my chance to do that. To be aggressively trans. To be aggressively ace. Uh... But otherwise, like, it makes me kind of sour just knowing that, like, Pride Month is only a time for people to pretend to care. It sucks. You know? I feel like we should change what Pride Month is every year to keep companies on their toes. <laughs> uh, yeah. Aggressively trans punches people femininely. Ah. <laughs> uh. I don't know why this has to be a whole fucking conversation. Like, why, it's like... People just kinda wanna exist. I don't know why this is... I don't know why this has to be a huge fucking fight. Who pushes you off a cliff, Kaylee? God. Alright, later, Missile Dragon. But yeah. <laughs> I don't know why this has to be a fight, man. It's it's so At this point it's it's so unnecessary. Like, why is it such a big deal for us to want, you know, to, to be treated the way we want to be treated? You know? Why is it, why is it a problem that we just want to be called the, the gender that we associate with? Transitions you for life to Jesus. <laughs> I just don't get it. Trying to computers revolutionary. God. Hey. You have anything else we want to talk about? <laughs> this is kind of a depressing conversation for vibes. I guess I don't mind talking about it every once in a while, because, like, po political conversations do need to happen every once in a while. They're important to have, but, like, they're depressing. Gonna burn a house down with pink, white, and blue fire. Yeah, sure, why not? Be gay, do crimes. That's a gender. <laughs> yeah, I'm not really a big 
fan of talking politics. I can, like, it's not a problem, but I'm just not a big fan of it. Favorite music genre in video games? That's a weird question to ask. Like, what do you mean? Music genre in video games. specific question but also orchestral I'm just confused what you mean by music genre and video games Metal Sonic music or the whimsical upbeat Mario music. Guessing you still haven't slept. No, I have not. I started vibes early so I could finish them early. So I could go to bed earlier than how I did yesterday. Which was going to bed at 11. Not fun. I don't know how you people can fucking do it. Like, staying up all night. Like, sleep's important, people. Sleep helps your productivity. Sleep is important. <sighs> gotta be on that grind, you know? If you don't sleep, you're not gonna be productive. Think I stay up by choice? Why don't you go to sleep then? If you're if you're looking at insomnia, you can go you can get medications for that. Toodles full name is Suzanne Scribblesworth Doodle Tones. Nah. Nah. Some people love to burn that midnight oil and coffee. Eh. Eleven thirty AM for me right now, but yeah, I'm sleeping sucking at the moment. Audie said no. Then you're just gonna have to fight your body. Fucking cool down your room with like AC or something if you have it, or like a fan. Um, you know. Uh, uh did I drop? No, I didn't. Am I dropping? I can't tell. What? I never have a sleep schedule. I know Cabbage doesn't have a sleep schedule. <laughs> I don't think you're dropping. I couldn't tell. But, yeah, no, um... It's like getting to sleep, though. You know, you can always, uh, lower the temperature. Uh, like, warming, like, your, your body, when, when you go to sleep, you know, it's like cooling down. Cabbage can't sleep. Cabbage never was able to sleep. But yeah, your body cha the temperature changes as you uh, as you sleep, so your body like will cool down when you lie uh, lie down and warm uh, warm when you get up. So cooling down your room is actually a really good way, like to to get to, to sleep if you're having trouble sleeping. You can use the four seven eight breathing method, which is um, you place the tip of your tongue behind your upper front teeth, you exhale completely through your mouth, you know, until you make like a little whoosh sound. Then you close your mouth, inhale through your nose while mentally counting to four. Then you hold your breath, count to seven. Then open your mouth and exhale completely. 
uh, counting to eight, and then you repeat the cycle at least three more times until you fall asleep. Um, um, you can help, you can get onto a schedule, like, you can, like, force your body to go to bed at any set, at any certain time, and that'll get you on a, on a, on a sleep schedule. Um, you can practice yoga, meditation, or mindfulness. Um, you can, uh, like, avoid, if you avoid looking at the clock, that's a good way of doing it. Um, you can avoid naps during the day. Um, if you, uh, what the fuck are you talking about? I'm, I'm helping, or, like, I'm, I'm telling you guys how to get to sleep so you guys can sleep better. <clears throat> Um, but like, yeah, uh, you can like watch what you eat, like certain things that you eat can, uh, can affect your, your sleep. Um, like a high carb diet, I think, helps you can go, uh, helps you go to sleep faster. Um, you can exercise during the day, you can, um, I mean, there's always the relaxing music. Uh, you punch your punching bag and let it hit you until you pass out. I mean, that's part of the exercise, I guess. Um, you know, getting away from your electronics and turning off your electronics. You know, stepping away from your phone or your, like, computer and stuff like that. Um, you try aromatherapy. Um, you could, like, write before bed. Like, stimulate the brain a little bit before you go to sleep. Um... Like, setting aside 15 minutes to write about your day. Um... Because that can also probably reduce stress as well. Um, you can limit your caffeine intake. Uh, I know that's kind of rich coming from the girl who drinks fucking diet sodas, like, constantly. But if you limit your caffeine, um, uh, intake, you can actually probably go to sleep a lot, but, uh, a lot quicker and a lot, uh, easier. You can adjust your sleep position uh, to either your back, stomach, or side. Uh, basically, um, you know, whatever, whatever like helps you. In particular, you can read something. Uh, alternatively, you can try to focus on staying awake, which I, it does sound counterproductive, but like um, you become like you get trapped. You know, your mind gets trapped in like a paradox. So you, you try to stay awake instead of forcing yourself to sleep. And, um, like, that can, like, you know, cause your brain, I guess, to, to like, stress itself out to, to pass out. It's not a particularly, like, good one, uh, but that is a way of going to sleep if you need it. Um, you can, like, visualize things that make you happy. Um... Yeah, there's always the medicine, as I said. Um, there's lots of different ways to, to fucking uh, go to sleep at a, at a good time, or like to force yourself to fall asleep when if, if you need to. Just sleep at 10 p.m. and wake up at random times. You know that that works if that works for you. Um, you know, waking up at random times is probably not a good thing though, because that that could indicate a lot of different things. It could indicate that you only get like two hours of sleep, and that's not particularly good. Um, is that gonna fix my anxiety and stopping me from sleeping? I mean, when it comes to when it comes to anxiety, you focus on your breathing, and so the the, the what was it four seven eight method? That'd probably be good a uh, good indicator for that. Because with, with anxiety, uh, spe specifically with panic attacks and stuff like that, um, the, the most important thing you want to do with panic attacks is you want to focus on your breathing. So, for, um, did I break my mic? No, I, I'm kind of fo pointed towards more to the, to my air conditioner, so it's probably just breathing into my mic. Um, <clears throat> sorry about that. But yeah. Um, but yeah, using the 478 breathing method, you could probably, um, you could probably focus on your breathing, uh, for, like, anxiety, and you can, like, focus on, uh, and it can help you, like, you know, fall asleep at a, at a reasonable time. But don't sleep on your right side, and in your case, you get acid reflex. That is, that is the, that is the case. Um, yeah. You want to sleep either on your left, your back, 
or your your stomach. You never want to sleep on your right. Your right will um, will pour acid out of your stomach. It's not good. You will you will wake up in a horrible horrible state if you sleep on your right side. So don't do that. That that is actually a thing. Can't control the times I wake up. You know, let's just go back to sleep. Use this lotion that you can put on your most. Yeah, aromatherapy. That's. Aromatherapy is, is, is definitely one of the ways that people recommend going, uh, like helping you go to sleep. Um, you can run a fan. Yep, it help, helps cool down your, your room a little bit. Noise alone. Yeah, that could uh, go with like the music. Sleep on your right nearly every night. Yeah, sleeping on your right side is actually really bad for you. Sleeping on your left side is actually really good for your heart. Like sleep- if you sleep on your left- yeah. If you sleep on your left side, it's good for your heart. You sleep on your right side, a s fucking acid pours out of your stomach. <laughs> That's just how it works. Never woke up with acid reflux. It's still not good for you. <laughs> yeah, you wanna you wanna sleep on your left side. Your, I am saying left side, right? I'm hoping I'm saying left side, because otherwise I'm gonna be giving the wrong information. Can't sleep on your right, wake up with a sore throat from the stomach acids. Yeah, it's... Uh, that's why I said you don't want to do that. Some people will wake up with acid reflux, but either either way, you're still pouring acid out of your stomach if you sleep on your right. Don't do that. Don't do that. That's really bad. Take some Tums or eat something evil to that, of course. Um, also... Um, another, another thing, um, that, like, is important to know, uh, when it comes to sleeping, uh, where was it going with that? I had a thought, oh, right, yeah, um, you don't want to eat right before bed. It's, that's actually a really bad idea, um, cause then you're, you're, uh, from what, I understand, uh, if you eat, like, right before bed, like, that slows down your digestive process, and you can wake up with, like, a really bad, really bad tummy ache. So, yeah, you don't want to eat before bed. <clears throat> that you've definitely heard. I mean, yeah, that's a very common one to hear. Like, you don't even need to do the amount of studying that I have for sleep and dream research, uh, in order to know that one, but people still do it anyway. That's why, uh, by 8 o'clock, that is my cutoff. I don't eat anything, um, like, the minute it hits 8.30, I don't eat anything until I get, a get around to going to bed. Like, at that point, I just go to bed and then I'll wake up the next morning, you know, have breakfast and what have you. But 8.30 is my cutoff point. Sleeping on your stomach was bad for your back. It can be. It can be bad for your back and your uh, and your neck if you're not careful. Um, those are both uh, things. Sleeping on your on your left side can also be good for your heart, but bad for your neck. Um, depends. Really depends on your pillow. Also, try not to sleep with your mouth open. That'll make your throat feel like shit. Nope. Um, that's more. I mean, I mean, I guess. I guess it would like make your throat dry, but it's not. That's not an inherent. Sleeping with your mouth open is not going to in inherently like make your your throat feel like shit. I don't think. Don't exercise right before bed either. Yeah. What I'm hearing right now is that sleeping is bad for you. No, there there are ways that sleeping is good for you. Sleeping it helps your productivity. 
sleeping sleeping is, is is good to get into the habit of because if you don't sleep you will die Ugh. sleeping is a good thing but it's a case-by-case -case basis for everyone but sleeping is good for you generally. But yeah, I do a lot of research into like the science behind sleep and like dream interpretation and stuff like that. I actually have the dream bible as like one of my fucking bookmarks because I'm just like that interested in it. It's it's something that I enjoy. I think it's I think it's a really cool cool feel. Stress levels can affect sleep too. Well, yeah, stress is a silent killer, TBH. Just generally speaking, stress is a fucking silent killer. But one way of helping that is if you're super stressed, cut down on your caffeine intake. Which again, I know is rich coming from Miss Drinks Diet Soda all the time, but seriously, if if you do have like high stress levels, cut down on your soda intake because that's not going to help you. Yeah, keeping a uh, pillow between your legs is actually good for you because it uh, it, it can help uh, with your, um, oh, I'm trying to remember what it helps with. I know it is just generally a good idea though. I'm drawing a blank on what it's good for though. <laughs> uh, I'm still very tired. Looks so like the empty cans of Diet Coke in the room, yeah. I have a, I have a Diet Coke, like, right here. It's like a two liter bottle. <laughs> <sighs> so, like, I know I'm a hypocrite, but, like, that, that doesn't make me wrong. Just means I need to fucking kick the caffeine habit whenever I get super stressed. I'm kind of reliant on it right now. Tend to oversleep in your stress, but if you're in the middle of a breakdown, sleeping becomes inconsistent. Yeah, I have moments where, uh, especially during the winter time, I have moments where I just kind of become narcoleptic. Which is not a word that you guys hear very often. Typically you hear, like, insomnia and stuff like that, but narcolepsy is just the, the opposite of that. So, especially during the winter time, I just start hibernating. <laughs> Like, I'll just kind of sit there, like, work at my computer, and then I'll just, like, pass out without any, like, rhyme or reason. I have fallen in uh, fallen asleep in several calls because of that. Looking at your computer and phone screen for long periods of time right before bed can that affect your sleep. Yep, this is true. I mean, I just read off a lot of these, Comet Coon. Well, I, I'd say read off as if I had anything that I was actually reading. I rattled off. All of that stuff. Like, I've... I sleep better in cold? Yeah, you typically will. I, I literally... Did any of you guys hear any of the things that I had recommended to help you get to sleep better? <laughs> I feel like I'm just, like, re like, recapping everything that I just rattled off to you guys. Uh... Christ. And came in kind of late, to be fair. Yeah, I just I just rattle off like a bunch of things. Like you know, cooling down your room helps uh, helps people can go to sleep. Uh, you can do like the the four seven eight breathing method, which is where you like, um, where you like breathe you breathe in through your mouth, like through your teeth. Um, and then you like breathe in. No, yeah, you breathe out through your teeth. Then you breathe in through your um, your nose, 
count to four, hold your breath, count to seven, open your mouth and exhale completely, counting to eight. Sleeping during Cuban nights are the worst. Well, yeah. Um, but like, yeah, um, like practicing yoga, uh, yoga, meditation, mindfulness. You can avoid looking at the clock. You can avoid naps during the day. Uh, you can watch what you eat. Uh, and when you eat is also important. Uh, re listening to relaxing music, exercise during the day, get comfortable, turn off electronics, aromatherapy, uh, practice writing before bed. Um... Then there's like, uh, like you limit your caffeine, you adjust your sleep position, you, you can read something, you can like, um, like you can actually focus on trying to stay awake in order to help you go to sleep, you can visualize things that make you happy, and then you know, there's always medications if nothing else works. But like... I, I rattled all of this stuff out to you guys earlier, and, like, you guys have just been asking me to recap all of it. <laughs> like, Christ. But yes, all of that stuff that you've just listed off, Comic Coon, is, is right, is correct. Stuffed animals can be comforting too, but they do not help. They are just comforting. <laughs> but they, they are not like an important part of, of sleeping. Okay, did you guys get all that those this time? Do I have to do I have to rattle it off a third time? Just to sleep with the radio on to feel comfortable? Well yeah. Like relaxing your mind is is the important part. Right, that's that's the, the the general important part of going to sleep. Turn on lo-fi beats or iceberg video playlist for noise. Yeah, sorry. About that. Oh my god, cabbage. In any case. <clears throat> hey, Dragonite. Repeat a few dozen times so we can all go to sleep listening to the sleep advice. God. This stream has been transformed into a classroom. I mean, I can go on more topics regarding, like, the science of sleep and stuff like that, if that's what you guys are really interested in. Like, we can talk about the awful effects of sleep deprivation, if that's what you, if you guys, if that's what you guys want, it, want me to do. Weighted blankets help too. Didn't mention that yet. That's where I had a weighted blanket. Do it. Oh, you want me to go over the uh, the effects of sleep deprivation? Cause I mean, it's 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 actually really easy. Like I I brought it up as kind of like a bit, but like if you genuinely want to learn, like what happens if you don't get enough sleep um you uh you are susceptible to weight gain you have like a reduced sex drive um you have reduced memory like your your uh like it'll it'll have a substantial impact on your ability to remember things just period 
um, you have an increase, uh, an increase in, like, depression-like symptoms, and what was the fifth one? Because I read it just, like, this morning. Um, oh, right, it lowers your, your judgment and reaction times, I think. Like, a reduction in, in judgment and reaction times. So, like, not getting sleep, pulling all of these all-nighters and stuff like that, those are, like, those are things that you, you might be susceptible to. Those are, those are some, some effects of, of sleep deprivation. I, I just read an article about that this morning, like, Hopefully you guys, by the way, on the note of sleep and, and like, cooling down your room and stuff like that, hopefully you guys have, like, air conditioners and fans and stuff like that for the summer, because, like, heat in general means less sleep. So because, like, every, because everywhere is getting, like, hotter and stuff like that, uh, if you, if you live in, like, a hot climate area, um, you, it's going to be a lot harder to sleep for you guys in particular. So hopefully you guys have something to cool your rooms down. Like, uh, unironically. Like, as I said, sleep is very important. It's it's something that I take very seriously. Hopefully you guys have something to, like, keep yourselves cool during the night. And yet many employers have no issue with forcing employees to work with barely any time to sleep. I didn't say they were smart. Just that sleep was important. I don't honestly rather live in a colder place. I hate it when it hits the high 30s in the summer. Well, yeah. Because it's, it's easier to put more clothes on than to take your skin off. We all need to go in an ice cold place and high rain. Absolutely. Weird thing, I actually don't feel cold most of the time. Well, I mean, it's not it's not a whether or not you feel cold. It's whether or not you can like lower your body temperature, like at all. Sleeping in a colder climate helps you do that because when you go to sleep, your body does cool down. So when you're up and about, you your your body will heat up because like your body is working. But when you're when you're asleep, your body cools down. So having a colder area, having like AC in your room or a fan or something to, to help your room stay cool is very important because like it'll allow you to, like it'll it'll help you go to sleep because it'll it'll help you know cool down your body when you are ready to sleep. So. Uh, whether or not you feel cool or cold is not really the point. The point is to cool down your body so you can sleep. Because <laughs> as it stands, as I said, uh, fucking global temperatures are rising, right? Global warming is very much a thing. And uh, during the summer, Y'all are gonna have a really hard time sleeping if you don't have something to cool down your room with. So, like... It's, it's important. Genuinely, it is important. Maybe that's why so many of my friends are, like, insomniacs. Maybe they just need, like, AC in their rooms. AC for everyone. We're already, like, heating up the fucking world. In other news, NFTs suck. And apparently Ringo Starr is selling them.
Isn't Ringo dead? No. I don't think so. Yeah, Ringo is still up and in, up and about. He's 81 years old. Looks good for his age, though. NFTs are a disease, yeah. Global warming fucking blows. This was very much a doodle stream in the background while I shower kind of night. Yo, I mean, if I can teach you guys stuff about sleep, that's fine by me. Apropos of nothing, did you know that one in three American adults do not get enough sleep? <laughs> it's kind of concerning, really, when you think about it. One in three. Crazy, right? Considering the work culture, yeah. Actually, for those who work at home, um, do not sleep in. You're not doing yourself any favors either. That was one that that was one that was making rounds, like this past week. It was like a big thing about like, hey, if you're working from home, don't sleep in. You're doing yourself zero favors. So just keep that in mind. If you, if you work from home, uh, don't sleep in. Anyone else just vehemently despise any small lights in the room while they're trying to sleep? Um, that depends. <sighs> Sublights, yes. Sublights, no. Um, for instance, blue lights. I, de I definitely don't like having blue lights shine in my face. Dude, do you know what I want in my room? I want a lava lamp. Lava lamp would be so fucking awesome to have in my room. I used to have a lava lamp growing up. Like when I was when I was a teenager. I would have a lava lamp in my room. That shit was sick. I wish I still had it. But I do not. I think it broke. Sometime along the way.
But I want a lava lamp. <laughs> Genuinely, if I could afford it, I would just buy a lava lamp. I mean, I can technically afford it, but... Lava lamps are cool. So fucking, like, chill to watch. But yeah, um... <clears throat> but yeah, so, um... So yeah, uh... What was I saying again? Oh right, blue light. Um... So, so I, I had said, um... Out of all the lights, blue light is, is one that I do not like having shining in front of me. Um, and there's actually a reason for that. Uh, and yes, you are correct, it ties back into sleep. Um, so let me tell you guys about circadian rhythm. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, are you guys even interested? Is this is this another lesson you guys want to have? <laughs> Cause I actually, th this is actually a really fascinating thing, in my opinion, out of all of like the sleep science stuff that you can learn. I want I want to make sure you guys want to learn this first before I go on a tirade. I don't want to kill my own stream. Later, Comic Coon. Is your stream if homies don't like that they can leave? I don't want to kill my stream. That's the thing, though. This stream is for vibes. But if you guys want to learn, I'm, I'm, I'm down. I think, I think how blue light affects sleep is fucking fascinating. Tell us the story? Okay. So, circadian rhythms, uh, teach me? Okay. Uh, yeah, circadian rhythms are 24-hour cycles that are a part of the body's internal clock. Uh, they run in the background, they carry out essential functions and processes, it's, um, and, and it, it's important to know, like, that's, th that these things, you know, work in the way <laughs> it's your class, Professor Doodle, or your students, I guess. But yeah, so... Yeah, circadian rhythms are 24 hour cycles that are part of the body's internal clock. They work in the background, and one of the most no well known circadian rhythms is the sleep wake cycle. Um, so, uh, they help, uh, basically, they, how they work is they work uh, by helping, like, make sure that the body's processes are optimized at various points during a 24 hour period. The term circadian comes from the Latin phrase, uh, if I remember correctly, it was like circa diem, which means like around a day. But basically, um, they, f for example, like flowers also have circadian rhythms. Uh, flowers will open and close at the right time and keep nocturnal animals from from leaving their shelter. Uh, like it'll also affect. Um, mental and physical systems throughout the body. Uh, like, I think it helps you develop proteins, uh, to match typical timing of meals. Um, which is why it's important to have, like, a, uh, a ready, like, uh, eating schedule. Like a, like a consistent eating schedule as well as a sleep schedule. Uh, I am really bad at keeping up with that myself. But it's, it's actually kind of important because, like, that helps your circadian rhythm, like, process when uh, the right time is for you to eat. Um, you know, they're, collect they're connected to, like, a master clock in your body. It's like a pacemaker, you know? Located in the brain. So, um, that's, that's, like, the best way to put it. Um, so blue light... Uh, fucks with your circadian rhythms. 
um, light is actually an important factor in aligning circadian rhythms. And um, that's because of the sunrise and sunset. So we actually get blue light from the sun. Blue light like simulates the part of your brain that make you feel alert. And so when you look at blue light, when you're like scrolling through like Twitter, because Twitter has blue blue light, or if you're one of the few people up on Facebook, or like Discord, or uh, uh, like a Tumblr, like if you scroll through Tumblr still, or what else is a what else is a, uh, a social media site that has a lot of blue in it? Um. Uh, I don't know, but point is when you're when you're looking at those those sites that have a lot of blue in them, um, like the blue in those lights actually is, make you feel alert. Like it's it fucks with your circadian rhythm. So that's why that's why it's very recommended for you to like put down your phone and stuff or like put away all like, uh, like all of your electronics and stuff. Like don't don't fucking doom scroll through like Twitter right before bed because that will fuck with your that will fuck with your your brain. That will fuck with your sleep patterns. Uh blue light also suppresses the body's release of melatonin, a hormone that like makes you feel drowsy. So while it's helpful during the day when you don't want to go to sleep, when you're trying to sleep, blue light is fucking awful. <laughs> So it's scientifically proven that Twitter is unhealthy, at least for your sleeping. It can keep you awake during the day. Like, that's that's not a bad thing. But, like, yeah, if you're watching TV or you're looking at your smartphone or your computer screen or your tablet or an e-reader or a video game, the reason why... The, like, the reason why you can sit there and, like, just do things for a long period of time... Uh, and then look down at your clock and realize it's 3 a.m. Yeah, it's because you've been fucking with your circadian rhythm all night. <laughs> so. And then also if you have fluorescent lights, but I don't... That's a whole different story that, that's a little bit harder to, to deal with. But fluorescent lights also get off blue light. Just an FYI for anyone who might sleep with fluorescent lights in your room. Just in case you didn't know, now you know. I find that part fascinating, though. That's, like, my f one of my favorite things to know about, uh, ab about, like, sleeping. <laughs> that's, that's why it's recommended that you turn off your electronics before going to bed. Because you don't want that blue light. That blue light bad. <laughs> and now you know. <laughs> Guess I'm weird because sometimes I'll fall asleep while scrolling through social media. Again, it's that, it's that circadian rhythm that's fucking with you. You know? You're, you're, you're fucking with, well rather you're fucking with your circadian rhythm. Like, I feel that. I've, I've had, I've done that before. I've fallen asleep at my computer before. But that, that's not, that, that's kind of the thing, right? It's just because you're fucking with your, your internal clock. Blue light bad, yeah, exactly. Used to be purely a night person who slept through school during the day in general. Jesus. I can't... I can't fucking complain too much, I guess. Used to be the spokesperson for falling asleep at the computer. Ah, uh, yeah, I remember that. Good times, good times. Is napping too much during the day a bad thing? Yeah. 
like taking a nap or yeah like taking a nap is not a bad thing but napping throughout the day yeah that's probably a bad thing because that would affect your sleep as well does anyone else here start to fall asleep and suddenly wake up because you get a falling slipping sensation i've done that before yeah <sighs> Oh. God, all this talk about sleep is making me tired. <laughs> it also doesn't help that, like, I slept really poorly last night, so. But yeah, just, this is your friendly reminder. When I play a game like Dream, it is because I'm genuinely interested in the topic. <sighs> when I when I play a game like that, it's because it's it's genuinely an interesting topic to me. So I also like you, Nikki. There's a lot you can learn from, from one's dreams and, and how one sleeps and stuff like that. It's also why I like the LSD Dream Emulator. <laughs> Shit's fascinating to me. I love the science behind sleep. It's such an interesting topic for me. Hmm. <sighs> Really want to play LSD? Uh, yeah, it's a f it was a fun game. I played it a little bit. Um, I never did finish it though. But I really, hmm. I find LSD Dream Emulator to be a very, very like interesting game. It's Morgan Time has trained it on Twitter for a whole week. I believe it. The fact that it's based on dream journal is super interesting to me. Well, yeah, like, Yuminiki is based on a dream journal. LSD Dream Emulator is based on a dream journal. Um, dream, like, the, there's, a, there's a game that I speed run sometimes. You might have seen it in the past week if you have been watching the past week. I don't know when you started showing up. But there's a game that I speed run called Dream. And there are these little, like, pages in the game that you can pick up, like these little page excerpts that you can pick up from the Dream Bible, and it's so cool. Like, it's, it, oh man, you learn so much about, like, what goes on in a dream, uh, like, doing that. And it's, it's actually based on, like, real Dream Bible stuff. And now that I've, like, started reading the Dream Bible for the fun of it, I've learned that a lot of, like, what is in, like, like the, the little page excerpts that you get in Dream uh, are based off of the real Dream Bible. It's so cool. I, oh man. I just find more reasons to really like that game. It's such a good game. They did so much research. Ah, it's so cool. I think I remember you making a video about Dream a long time ago. Yeah, I made a, a video uh, commentating on the Dream reviews. <laughs> and I... Oh, man. I want to see if there's any new bad reviews of Dream. There's the reviews. 
I feel like we need more games similar to LSD and Dream. LSD Dream, you mean Nikki? Yeah. Oh, there's a lot of new reviews for this game. I could totally make a second video just going through the fucking reviews. When designing a game that explores dreams, you're removing all the restrictions that limit traditional forms of the media. Not necessarily true. Which game? Dream. Like, the, the game that I speedrun. Yeah, when designing a game that explores dreams, you're removing all the restrictions that limit traditional forms of the media. Not true. <laughs> you really don't have to do that. Like, I'm tired of this cliche at this point that because something takes place in a dream, it has to be 100% surreal. Like, I'm so tired of it. I get tired whenever fucking, what is it, Eraserhead gets brought up, or, or whatever, D David Lynch. Like, I don't... Like, surrealism isn't a bad thing, but like... Not all dreams need to be that way, you know? Sometimes dreams are very mundane, and since Howard lives a very mundane life, you know, his dreams are going to be much more, like confined like that's part of the that's part of the reason you know it's been a while since i've seen you play that or at least speed run it i did so earlier this week but yeah um so no you you don't you don't need to remove all the restrictions that traditional forms of the medium you you can do like that that's kind of the thing dreams are like however however your your brain sees them as and with with dream it's much more symbolic than it is um you know just surreal for the sake of being surreal you know uh hypersoft reject this notion along with infinite resp uh repository of stimulus and imagination focusing on s uh, instead on creating the utmost etiolated and somnific experience possible the story, voice acting, puzzles, and aesthetics are amazingly bad. I can recall only one serviceable visual, and and most of the music is decent. The roller coaster segment is a perfect encapsulation of everything wrong with this game, and I would love to know the justification for its pathetic existence. Whatever dream you have tonight, it will be more interesting than this. I don't like this review. Ugh. God, there's... First and foremost, thrown around a lot of $2 words. It was a boomer shooter that was made based off of going into the dream going into dreams. Yeah. Dreams aren't always surreal and not many people understand that. Sometimes they can be fragments of normal life organized in a weird and sometimes uncanny way. Yeah, exactly. Like I think a good example of this, right? So, um Howard uh like the first dream you go into in in dream is a desert, right? Um, and it's like, yeah, it's, it, it seems like a very, um, it seems very boring, you know, cause it's, it's a desert, but like, a desert represents a situation that is totally uncaring or unconcerned about your feelings or happiness. Uh, it, j this is just going off of the dream bible. It reflects something in your life that is cold, meaningless, unenjoyable, or lack respect. Feeling empty inside or that nobody cares about you. Um, considering Howard's relationship with his, his uncle, his uncle Edward, that then passed away from a brain, from actual br uh, brain cancer. 
confirmed brain cancer. Um, then, like, yeah, that obviously he's going to feel like not very many people care. Uh, feelings about a situation being barren or stark, an enduring kind of deprivation, a longing for life to be fresh and fertile again. A Howard lives a boring life. That that's literally why, you know, why he he finds himself isolated in his dreams. That's why he finds his his uh, subconscious to be much more interesting than his his you know daily life. Uh, again, it's it's symbolic, and the the people who made dream did their research on this. It is a very like. For me, as, as someone who likes to look into these things, who likes to study, who likes to read up on this kind of stuff, it's very interesting to me to see these people, like, look at what goes on in a dream. Like, to, to look at these, the, the, the dream, like, uh, the, the dream interpretations and, you know, build off of that. It's so interesting, and it makes sense when you actually know what these, like, what these, these dreams, uh, like, entail what these dreams mean why like what these 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 things are symbolic of it <laughs> i i care deeply a lot about this Uh, to dream of being lost in a desert may reflect feelings of being unable to escape situations that feel unbearable, empty, or bleak. Um, the dream of being lost in a desert may represent feelings about having a problem or sensitive responsibility while nobody cares about feeling unsupported by anyone at all while you have a new development in your life. Like, these are, these are all things that make sense within the confines of the story of dream. Fun fact, that game is a lot better than maybe people think because it is a little scuffed. Like, the gameplay is scuffed, so that must mean the whole game is bad? Not necessarily. It's, it's very narrative, like, very narratively driven, and if you don't really understand, like, the nuances of dreams and, and interpret, like, how, how to interpret certain aspects of dreams, you're not, you're not really gonna get anywhere. You're not gonna- the, the, there's no fucking reason why so many people fucking hate it. It's cause not many people <laughs> care. Uh, it's potential to be an introspection into philosophy and characters' li lives intrigue me. Like Dear Esther and The Witness. I guess I read too much into it because Dream is a half-baked and void of interesting thought. That's just not true. It's either dull, generic, gibberish, or generic observations from Howard about his environment. That's... Uh, played about one to two hours and all I learned about Howard could be summarized in a few sentences. All learned from the game in the first few minutes. Oh, and did I mention the gameplay is mostly a bunch of mazes? No, it's not. That's literally just the catacombs and that's it. You said you played one to two hours, you obviously didn't get out of the fucking desert. Dreams is a game that tries to copy other successful introspective ex adventures without actually understanding what makes them good. Avoid this one. Ah, fuck off. I might do another video on, on dream reviews, because a lot of them are really bad.
I'm just scrolling through these fucking reviews now. I... Mm, all that it's telling me is make a second video. I might fuck around. We'll see. <sighs> What's well, a genre you've never played but want to? I mean, I can't think of anything at offhand. I feel like some reviewers put more effort into putting colorful words into their reviews than actually understanding the media they review. Well, yeah, the one that I read all the way through, the one that was thrown around a lot of $2 words, absolutely. It's like, cool, you read a dictionary. Awesome. Now, are you going to actually, like, analyze the thing that you are reviewing? No, you're just going to say it's boring because it's not a surreal fucking landscape? Well, fuck you too, I guess. Good to know that... Good to know what kind of reviewer you are. Dude, what if I did a review of Dream? Like, I have well more than enough fucking... Like, I've, I've played 172 hours on just the Steam version alone. That does not even, like, account for the DRM-free version that I bought off of, like, good old games. Like, all of the times that I've speedran the game, all of the stuff that I've learned about the game, all of, like, the, like, going into the fucking code and shit, uh, the, the, all of the stuff that I've learned about dreams and what have you. What if, what if I did a review of dream? What if I did a fucking analyzation of the stream? Fucking two hours, or, or, of game, fucking two hours. So many reviews are this thing is bad because I don't, it doesn't do explicitly what I would have done with the concept. So instead of judging it based on how well it achieved its intended goal, I'll just complain about what it's not what I would do. Basically. Man, should I go back to reviewing? <laughs> am I in the wrong, like, am I in the wrong area? Commentary's not the thing that I should be doing. Should I go back to reviews? I don't know. Genuinely, I could go on about Dream for hours, both the pros and the cons of, like, things that Dream has done, or Dream can do well, and Dream also can, like, fucking break and not be super good. Like, I am aware the game is really scuffed. By all accounts, it is, it is an incredibly scuffed game that does have its problems. For instance, the fact that the conveyor, uh, conveyor buttons in the, the third level, the resort level, the fact that the conveyor belts can stick and just ruin the entire, like, puzzle, causing you to have to reset it, is annoying. That could, I definitely could see that being a turnoff for people. That's not particularly a good quality that the game has, and I can definitely see that being a problem. There are some levels, such as the, um, the Labyrinth, or no, not the Labyrinth, um, the, the Hollow, the Hollow, uh, level is, is, like, kind of redundant, or not really redundant, it's kind of worthless, there's not really a lot to do in that, le in, in that particular level, uh, because you don't even really get anything looking at the last word of the poem like if you if you did manage to um to to get to the last word of the poem it's not like howard reads it or anything it's just it's just kind of there for the sake of being there 
So, uh, that, that's kind of pointless. Um, it's not even really particularly amazing for a story, uh, a storytelling device. Like, it, it, it does help kind of, like, paint a picture of, like, what kind of, you know, what kind of, uh, thinker Howard is, but it's not, like, it's not, like, super relevant, because if, if you skipped out on the hollow, uh, you would be missing, like, maybe five points, and that's about it. So, that, that like, you, you don't, you don't need to do the hollow, period. Um... The, um, a lot of the items in, in Dream, just generally speaking, don't do anything either. Like, you have the rock, and you have the teleporter, and you have the alarm clock. And that's really the only things that you've got that would really help you in any way, shape, or form. Everything else are, like, optional little toys and trinkets and stuff like that. None that particularly help you in any aspect of the game. Which is a little annoying, you know, you, you pick up all these items for extra points, but none of them really do anything. There's no dark areas that really require you to use your torch. There's no, um, like the, the coin flip doesn't do, like, shit all. Uh, you don't need to leave a trail, uh, with the cube at any point. Like, you theoretically could do something like that in the catacombs, but you don't get the cube until after the catacombs, so that's a little bit of a problem. Uh, there's not really anything you need to look at from far away for the, uh, for the, the, the telescope to really do anything. There's a lot of useless items, and I could see that also being kind of a turn away from people or kind of being an annoyance for someone. Um, you know, I, I uh, uh, I could see certain levels... You know, especially when, when you're looking at something like the office level, where most of the rooms don't have really anything in it to look at or to explore. Um, a lot of the times, there are places that do feel a little empty. Um, that feel like they could probably have used more triggers and stuff like that. Uh, or, or like extra things to look at, maybe extra items, maybe extra like puzzles or something like that. Um, I, the, the game could have used more of that. There are problems of the game, but it's not the problems that everyone fucking says it has. Because people kind of get stuck in the desert and they go, what do? Oh, this must be bad game. Despite the fact that if you just, if you just explore and look around, it's a puzzle exploration game. You're... The idea is to explore, to find, like, the an either the answers to puzzles, or to find the puzzles themselves. Just look around, just experiment with things. Um, you will stumble into the, co the, the, the desert computer at some point. Like, you're bound to stumble into it. There's zero way that you won't. <sighs> Maybe I will bite the bullet one day and make, like, a whole fucking appreciation review of, of Dream. Maybe one of these days I'll also get done with the speedrun tutorial, but that's not here nor there. Ah. Uh. Just fucking, an like, analyze Dream from, like, an actual perspective that's not just I don't like walking sims even though it's not a fucking walking sim <sighs> I hate the fact that people treat puzzle exploration if it's just a fucking walking sim anyway I've gone on enough I've gone on enough tirades I should probably be heading off um been talking about like sleep and stuff like that I do need to get some sleep so um tomorrow is Sunday no I don't want to explore that means it's a walking simulator in random strongman reviewer yeah basically yeah I should probably head off so tomorrow is Sunday I don't think I have a game set up for that yet do I did I like
like install a game for for Sunday. Uh, no, it doesn't look like it. So I guess I'll figure something out. I guess I don't know. Um, if not, then I'll just do whatever. Be like speed running or or something else. Anyway, I'm gonna hop off. Bye, right, guys.